when you only got a hundred years to live. Good morning, Sonder fam. Rise and shine. I said it's my early bird bunch today. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, good Monday morning. It's going to be a marvelous Monday. Um, welcome to our Ikigai social. I have to say that slowly because my deep East Texas accent wants to say other things. So yes, it is Ikigai. And we are so honored that you are joining us today to tackle this page with the weird clover on it. Um, I am Jennifer Ogilvie, one of the t uh, a member of the facilitator team for Silk and Sonder, and I'm coming to you from the Dallas, Texas area in a suburb called Garland. I'm kind of new here, moved here about a year and a half ago to be closer to one of my children, honestly, the grandchildren, and uh, relocated from the Houston Gulf Coast area. So joining me today on chat is another one of our fabulous facilitators. If you've gone to socials, you'll recognize her. There's Maya, and um, it is an early start for her. She, Our time difference is a little bit uh, about an hour, so she is uh, a really early bird this morning. But I am so glad to have Maya at the helm of the chat. If you have any questions, she will be so glad to answer them and to help you out. Um, by being here this morning, you are entered in the monthly 
a Silk and Sonder raffle for a self-care package. So cross your fingers on that. That's always announced in our monthly newsletter, um, The Compass. Make sure, double check, look over real quick and make sure that your chat is set to everyone. So um, when you do uh, have, ask something or, or give a comment, um, everybody can see it. Um, let's see. So if you guys have uh, been to any of my socials, you've heard my spiel about how I retired a little bit early from years and years and years of being an early childhood educator. And one of the things that's been so great for me is finding Silk and Sonder. I've been using it almost a year now and being able to put pen to paper with um, my days structure my days. I no longer had that structure from when I was working. But I also, as I've entered this new chapter of retirement and what things look like, boy, doing work in the prompts and attending socials and being part of this community has been so uh, beneficial for me personally. So I am, I have become such a fan. And I got to tell you, I am so excited about this month's theme of imagination. Um, one of the perks of being an early childhood educator and um, administrator was I could leave a, a terribly long, boring meeting um, from maybe our church staff when we were planning and then go straight into a classroom and be exposed to so much imagination. Um, getting to pop in a classroom and become part of a, a child's world for just a few minutes. It kept my heart happy. And it was such a good balance for me in what I did as an administrator. Um, and balance is a word we're going to talk a lot about this morning. So here's what our morning is going to look like. We're going to kick off with an imagination activity. I know that's a pretty standard thing, but I will tell you this imagination activity is actually going to um, kind of sow the seed for the work we're going to be doing throughout this social. Then we are going to tackle pages 14 and 15, the ones that you've left blank um, so far, and then we will close things up. So um, I, uh, you know, I, I was, when I was assigned Ikigai, I was like, oh my goodness, what what in the world is this? <laughs> so I have um, discovered a lot about this concept of how you frame your life um, over the past month or so. I went to the library and I checked out some books. I got online, Googled, um, did lots of different articles and blogs, and I watched about three or four different TED Talks on this whole Ikigai concept. The one thing, the one takeaway I'm going to give you is that this is not going to be a one and done social this morning. Okay. So what we're doing is we are going to plant the seeds that you then will take into this new year. Um, this one is a pr pretty deep, a lot of content, a lot of soul searching. And, um, and so I, I think what we're going to find this morning is that the, our work that we will do will bring us to some aha moments so that we can uh, keep growing and pursuing whatever our icky guy is. So today, don't worry if we are working on part of a prompt and you don't finish when the song is over. I'm going to give you a little extra time at the end as we kind of put everything together. And um, just remember that today is a starting point. All right. So um, it it could be that working through Ikigai could take you all year long. Um, so it's, it's going to be kind of a fun journey this morning. I'm very honored that you are here to share this with me. Um, so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get your journals and open to a blank notes page. Um, pages 22 and 23 are kind of the first first part of your journal that's empty. And then page 45 is actually the notes page for this week's uh, spread. And um, we are going 
to travel back in time for just a second. So take a deep breath. I need to take a deep breath. I've been, I've got my extra large cup of coffee this morning. So I'm kind of um, caffeined up <clears throat> and maybe lower your gaze. And what I want you to do is to take a moment to travel backward in time and imagine yourself as a child or a teen. And I want you to find yourself in a moment of joy. And I know that for some of us, there may be some trauma involved in, in our childhood. So I'm gonna encourage you to really dig for um, some, some happy moments. Maybe you were with a grandparent, somewhere where you felt safe. Maybe you were in a classroom with a teacher that became a beloved soul to you. Wherever you are, find your younger self in that moment of joy. Can you see yourself? What is making you laugh or smile? What are your favorite things at that time in your life? What are you playing? Or what are you pretending to be? Um, I always wanted to be a teacher, so that was always my go-to pretend. So I want you to take just a few minutes to capture that time and space in your journal. And again, this is going to be um, something that we will use later on in this morning's social. So I'm going to leave you to this prompt and I'll be right back.
Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing everybody. My goodness. I saw lots of happy memories. Um, everything from pretending to be a mommy to a little sibling, um, snow tunnels, horses, banging pots and pans like you were rock stars, mud creations, skiing with your family, um, people who were just in love with books, so many wonderful things from um, those memories of, of early you. Um, very beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, again, we're going to be tapping back into that in just a little while. So let's open our pages to 14 and 15. And take a look at this um, funny looking clover. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the principle of Ikigai. Um, and then we will divide some things up and, and try to take things in little bites this morning. So what exactly is this Ikigai, right? Um, in the Japanese, uh, it's a Japanese word and, and there is no exact translation for it. It is just one of those words that is on its own. Um, the iki part means life or being alive. And then the guy is what is worthwhile and has meaning. So basically, um, it's a reason to get up in the morning. It's your waking up to joy. It gives you the feeling of uh, being in the zone or finding your flow. Think of it as a radio frequency of your life. Okay, the better we tune into it, then the more that we feel our life has meaning. So it's all about this balance between your past, present, and your future. Balance is a very important component of Ikigai. <clears throat> so as this diagram, you can see it's got all these clovers and stuff. And you see Ikigai is in the very center. I'm going to use my little mouse right there. Um, and it involves these four spheres of interest and then how these spheres might overlap. Um, I love me a good Venn diagram. You know, that's a great teacher graphic uh, go to. Um, so when I saw both, you know, these double Venn diagrams, I was like, oh, holy cow. Uh, so what we're going to look at is, is these intersections. So at the intersection of what you love and what you're good at is, is your passion. And then what you love and what the world needs, that's your mission. Um, what the world needs and what you can be paid for is your vocation. And what you're good at and what you can be paid for is your profession. So that's kind of what all of that uh, clover looks like. The whole point of Ikigai is embracing the joy of little things, being in the here and now, reflecting on 
past memories and having a frame of mind that allows you to have an active, happy life. So some of the content that we're going to look at today may come very easily to you. Um, this, the first prompt we did was probably very easy for some folks, and yet others struggle to find those happy memories or that moment in time where you felt freedom and joy and safety. So we're all on our own journey. And so that's why I, I mentioned earlier today, don't worry if you don't finish a prompt or you wanna, you're, you're struggling, you can leave it blank and just kind of, I used the word last night, ruminate, just kind of let it marinate in your brain to uh, figure out what direction you need to go. This is all about you and your journey. So let's dig in, shall we? So you're going to be um, defining your ikigai by what you value the things you like to do and the things that you are good at. All righty. So those are going to be the things that drive you to find your ikigai. All right. So then on page 15, we have our four areas. All righty. And, and you see them, passion and mission and vocation and profession. And so we're going to start off by talking about passion. This sphere will include um, what you do or experience that brings you joy in life. Just the thing that makes you feel most alive and fulfilled. What do you feel passionate about? It might be things that you just love. You know, you're like, oh, I love to whatever. Maybe it's sailing or writing poetry or rock climbing or singing in a rock band, um, maybe reading a historical novel, uh, spending time with friends, sleeping under the stars, cooking a new dish. Whatever it is, it's important that you allow yourself to think deeply about what you truly love without any concern for if you're good at it or not. Um, for example, I love to sing. Not that great, but I love to sing. And it doesn't matter if you're good at it and if it doesn't matter if the world needs it or it doesn't matter if you get paid for it. This is just truly what do you love? So we're going to kick off with that first little box and I want you to answer these questions. What did you enjoy doing as a child or your early adult years? And um, what do you do now in your spare time that makes you happy? And you might just want to make a bunch of uh, lists, a list that says blank makes me happy. So we're going to just work on that one square, that passion square. And then I will check back in with you in just a moment. Mm -hmm.
will be still my heart. You guys have really tapped in to some beautiful moments some things that you love. Um, I just love the smell of books. Yes, that just makes me so happy to open up a book. I, I have a Kindle and I would rather not use it. So um, think about those small things that bring you delight, that makes your heart leap. And again, you may need to let this marinate a while to, um, oh yeah, I do, I love this. And, and things are gonna pop in your head. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about um, learning about Ikigai is that you start looking at life a little bit differently and um, being intentional about your thoughts and uh, what you're discovering about yourself that brings you true joy, your, your reason for getting out of bed in the morning. Alrighty, so if you didn't finish up or you want to leave a little bit of blank space so you can come back to it, that's great. I encourage you to do so. Let's look at mission now. So the, the subtitle up there says, do something the world needs. But I want to encourage you, the world felt so big and heavy to me. I will never be Gandhi. Never. Not, not, not me. Um, so I want you to maybe change that to do something your world needs. Um, I think that's an important uh, dis distinction between the world and maybe you do have some really big, hairy, audacious things that could happen for this world. But I, I think we need to frame it first about um, our family, our friends, our colleagues. Uh, think about what and who inspires you and what makes you annoyed and frustrated. And I think what's important about this question is I want to tap into something called righteous anger. Um, that is anger that changes the world, right? So people, um, you know, everybody, there's no one in this world who, who says, yay, cancer, right? Cancer's awful. People have gotten angry about it. And they have decided to dedicate their whole careers, right, to, to combating this disease. They've, gotten, they've been stirred by this righteous anger to make something better. So I think that's an important component of understanding how to frame your mission. What, you know, you have that passion, but, but when you look at mission, what stirs you to make changes? Who, what, what needs exist in the world? And so I gave some, some questions at the bottom there. My friend needs, my family needs, my colleagues need, and the world needs. So let's kind of take a moment to look at these. Again, you may not finish. That's okay. You're getting started and your brain is thinking about it.
Okay, I just I just saw a comment that said there's a lot to unpack here for sure. Again, that's I keep saying that's why we're like dipping our toes into this concept. Um, you know, if you're having trouble, think about needs of others. Um, maybe just start with your your neighborhood. Um, your community, or maybe you have friends who are going through something that that you can really um, just jump in and um, and kind of make that your mission, be purposeful. Uh, but I would just say if you're if you're a little stuck, just kind of look around. Um, it might it might be as as uh, small as being intentional when you are out in public and you know we we can't even see people's smiles anymore and and some of our folks that are are working out there in in public are just having such a hard time so it might your your mission might be being a light just being a light wherever you go all righty our next box to tackle is our vocation um do what you're good at take a look do you know your strengths and your skills and what are they and if you're not sure where to go what what do people ask you to help with a lot of times people could see something in you that you may not see in yourself um, you might be good at something like playing an instrument uh, maybe being empathetic um, I always felt like I was a really good sounding board. People felt very comfortable coming into my office and uh, brainstorming with me or just kind of dumping. They just wanted to be heard. So I always felt like that was one of, one of my skills, something I was good at. I could listen. Maybe you're really good at public speaking. Um, is there a sport that you're good at? Um, maybe painting or, or some crafts. Um, maybe it's brain surgery. It encompasses your talents and capabilities. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be passionate about them. Okay, this is just something you're good at. All right. Um, it doesn't matter if the world needs what you're good at. And it doesn't matter if you get paid for it. It's just what are you good at doing? So I'm going to leave you with this one to kind of think about and, and start brainstorming.
Okay, you guys have the ball rolling. I saw lots and lots of great things. Sometimes it's so hard to look at ourselves and think, what am I good at? So let that kind of bounce around in your brain if you struggled with it, or maybe go to someone that you trust, a spouse or a dear friend or a close colleague and say, what would you say I'm good at? Um, I saw lots of awesome things and, and some are really big and some might feel kind of small. I love that there's so many organizers um, and planners in this social today. That's that's my jam. There was nothing. I think that's what I love about Silk and Sonder. I love me a new brand spanking new calendar and planning out things. So keep, keep ruminating on that and um, discover the things that you are really, really good at. Finally, that last box to tackle this morning is the profession part of it. What, you know, do something that you can be paid for is what it says. Um, now, this one's a little tricky because it there is an implication that, um, you know, there's a value behind it, money, um, Sometimes we may be earn. I saw a TED talk and one of the guys was like, you know, I was earning all this money and I flew over some communities that were um, so poverty stricken and it struck his heart that there was this disconnect between the values of the world and the money part and then what he saw and it changed his life. So, so the money part can be a little tricky if we're really trying to find that icky guy, that, that Zen part of who we are. However, you may be, um, you know, we, we do have to make a living or we, we, you know, I'm retired now. And so it's, I don't have my same income anymore. Um, there are our stay at home parents. I want you to think about maybe a different currency when you're framing this, depending on where you are in life, um, because it, it doesn't always have to come down to the bottom dollar, although you may discover that there might be some kind of a side thing you can do that would generate um, an income. So it's kind of tricky. It just just depends on kind of where you are in your journey, because we we still have to pay our bills, right? We want electricity. Um, so it it works great if we can figure out how to line up things um, to get paid for the things that we're passionate about and that we're good at. So to answer this prompt, um, just think about your strengths and your skills. Um, I'm sorry, that was, that's what we just said. Um, think about a service or a product you could sell, what people would maybe pay you for or in what job you could do. Um, Ikigai is kind of about feeling that your work can make a difference in people's lives. So you might be really good at writing poetry, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can get paid for it. Um, but you might be able to work it so that that could happen one day with some planning. So um, anyway, we're going to visit this one a little bit. Again, this one was a little tricky. Think about now I make a living by um, and then in the future I'd like to earn money by and maybe it sparks a change. And, you know, if you are retired or you are caregiving for children or parents, think a different way of your currency and the rewards that you are getting for that work. I think that's a very important thing to consider. All right, I'm gonna let you dig into this one.
All right, lots of good things going through that chat. If you've had a chance to kind of peruse what folks are saying, um, I love that there were some folks who said I was making a great salary and I was completely miserable. And so I left and I did something else. That is, that is so brave and so scary. Um, other folks have filled um, the profession part where maybe they feel like they they're not able to leave a job, but they have picked up other things that just sparks joy in using what they're good at professionally. Um, they may be manning volunteer uh, groups or maybe starting um, a Facebook page or uh, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I read um, in either I read it or I don't know, again, I've been absorbed in Ikigai for about a month now, but, but someone said, if not a side hustle, maybe a side helpful. And I loved that. Find a way to utilize um, what you can bring to someone through volunteer opportunities. Um, I thought that was just really neat because we hear a lot about side hustles, but I liked side helpfuls. So um, now what, right? We, we filled these out. Um, I want to talk before we actually go into the prompt. Um, I just want to remind you that finding your Ikigai is a lifelong journey of understanding yourself better, uh, doing the things you love, putting your gifts to significant use and learning along the way. And there is a book called Blue Zones, and it's Blue Zones are places throughout the world with longevity. Um, and so uh, one of the things that you will find with Ikigai is that it exists in these Blue Zones throughout the world. Uh, because people are just real in sync with in sync with who they are. And I want to just read you a quick quote from one of the books that I picked up. Um, it says, forget what no longer inspires you and write new ideas in your quadrants. Ikigai, like life itself, is not something that is fixed or immovable. Change your direction if you need to. Life is too short to be stuck in a desert. And you guys know that, um, I don't know if you've heard uh, on the news, but we lost um, actor Bob Sackett, Sackett at age 65. Um, very sad. You know, he was everybody's dad on uh, for so, so many years. Like my kids grew up. Um, Anyway, with, with Bob Saget as kind of that dad figure role model on television. And I want to tell you what his very last tweet was, because I believe Bob Saget discovered Ikigai in his life. Um, after he performed, he was doing stand up and his tweet before he went to bed that night, not knowing that he would not wake up. He said, I loved tonight's show at whatever concert hall it was in Jacksonville, appreciative audience. Thanks again to Tim Wilkins for opening. I had no idea I did a two hour set tonight. I'm happily addicted again to this stuff. And I just thought, you know, he found his Ikigai and his Ikigai was to bring joy and make people laugh. And his last, night on earth he was doing exactly what he should have been doing and gosh wouldn't it be great if we can find that for ourselves so we're going to finish up with looking at your four components and ask yourself are they balanced pay attention to whatever you haven't been devoting enough time to recently and then write a list for each one of those neglected things with three specific actions that you're going to undertake to get those things up and running as you move toward awakening your icky guy. And I was just going to share one of mine. I love to sew and I want to pursue a side hustle with that. And so my three steps, I'm going to start watching and taking online classes and tutorials. I'm going to dedicate time to scheduling um, a practice with some of these 
I, I have an embroidery machine. I don't know how to use it that kind of thing, three times a week. And I'm going to start doing some test pieces to see if somebody will bite. Um, so that's just one of my areas that I'm going to grow. It. So I want you to think really quickly um, about maybe something you can do. And uh, we'll just take this into uh, your new year, things to ruminate on, um, kind of make plans to visit this, maybe once a month, you'll use this as one of your habit trackers that, uh, you know, you want to go back and, and take a look at Ikigai, maybe you'll make a chart in your journal every month um, to track these things. So, uh, you know, I, I laugh. Yes, Jackie, um, you're going to geek out on the icky guy. I, I can't get enough of it. I want to get more, uh, more and more information about that. Um, especially as I'm getting older, I like that whole longevity part because I'm pretty happy hanging around. So, um, but make sure that you know, that if this is something that spoke to you, that you know that it is a constant, you're a work in progress. And this is a great way to find kind of who you are. And, and yeah, Maya just put, this was a tough activity. It, it, it's kind of big. It's a big mouthful. Um, so as you know, I want to say thank you for coming today, for bearing with me. I feel like I, I should have done like four months of prep work and then we should have had a... Um, you know, three, three hour session to kind of start tackling this because it is a big, big bowl that we can just take a bite at a time. Um, so if you're not part of the Sonder Club, please uh, scan that QR code, maybe drop some of your work in that because I know a lot of people are struggling with what this icky guy is. Um, finally, you know, we are big on the, the surveys, the feedback from you. So please be sure that you fill out your survey based on uh, today. Um, I, I get to see the results. I'm Jennifer Ogilvy. There's two Jennifers. There's Jennifer Krippner and Jennifer Ogilvy. So you'll look for Jennifer O um, when you do that. And um, anything else that you might have, any other suggestions for Sonder uh, Club or Silk and Sonder for the journal? You know, there were lots of changes and that was because of you. So we really listen to feedback, uh, they, or they do in, um, in headquarters. And then finally, here are my songs that I chose for you today. We didn't uh, get to the last couple because of time, because this is a big, big uh, thing to chew on. So um, I will leave you with the nights. And I appreciate you guys coming and moving toward your guy. Be blessed. Once upon a younger year, when all our shadows disappeared, the animals inside came out to play. When face to face with all our fears Learned our lessons through the tears Made memories we knew would never fade One day my father, he told me Son, don't let it slip away He took me in his arms, I heard him say When you get older, your wild heart will live for younger days Think of me if ever you're afraid He said one day shining stars he said go venture far beyond the shores don't forsake this life of yours i'll guide you home no matter where you are one day my father he told me son don't let it slip away when i was just a kid i heard him say when you get older you wild heart will live for younger days think of me if ever you're afraid he said one day